What is something subtle people say that is a red flag to you? I used to go to the bar after work with co-workers. One of the managers didn't go, but a co-worker kept encouraging him to come out and party. He relented and said he'd come out for one drink at the bar. He took a sip and said, ah, I haven't had a beer in five months. No one else took notice of that. But it struck me, he was gone a week later, after coming into work drunk and doing something inappropriate, to anyone reading this, if someone doesn't want to drink, accept no for an answer, they might have a very good reason to say no, and pressing them on it, especially when well intentioned, might make it much harder for them to say a number. When someone says they're my karma child and implies their child makes their life so hard it must be payback for a mistake they made in the past. I usually discover this person has intense mental health or substance use history. It's a shitty way of mentioning their disdain for their kid. I'm an empath makes me want to get in my car and drive 10 hours in the opposite direction while shoving wool in my ears. My last roommate called herself an empath turned out to be a 30-year-old emotionally abusive ass who let her dog shit in our apartment. Empath my ass. In Dutch we have the word jezelik for the atmosphere of good, nice social moments. Then there are the old-fashioned people who accuse others of not being that, that is spoiling the atmos, because they don't do alcohol. This shows a lack of respect for other people's choices and a very limited mind of what having a good time actually means. That's just who I am, I'm not changing for anyone. Don't do anything for or not for people. You stunt your growth because you don't want to open your mind out of spite or resentment. You choosing to not change is letting them control you too. Be who you are but understand naturally who you are should always be changing. Some people let their beliefs or pride keep them from growing into the next chapter of their life. I won't apologize unless they apologize first or I'm sorry but you did things I didn't like too. That's not how apologies work. It tells me they shift the blame to others or that the problem can never be just them. It has to be someone else too. Using absolutes with someone they barely know. That's the best thing I have ever heard. I never do that. You're the funniest person ever insert awkward fake laugh. I met a guy like that and had a bad vibe from moment one. He ended up touching me against my will and being a massive asshole to all of his exes. When I tried to talk to my crying friend at a party while he was with her. He screamed at me like I killed his puppy. Everyone looked over in confusion. All I said was hi, and he immediately broke into a fake laugh like I'm just kidding. I hope his current GF is treated better. I'll never work with him again if I can help it. 15. I'm a sapiosexual. I've met very few people who are just plain stupid. Everyone is smart in different areas. So to me this just says my initial judgment of some eons intelligence is the one true measure of intelligence, and usually means they will talk down to you until you can prove yourself suitably intelligent in an area they deem reputable, a marker that someone is close-minded, arrogant, and unlikely to take on any new information that doesn't align with their existing views. To me that's far less attractive than someone with dyslexia who misspells simple words when texting. Oh you were deployed for 13 months? I could never do that. I just love my kids too much. You stay at home with kids? I could never do that. I have to have some brain stimulation. I would go crazy if I had nothing to do. I have about 97 of these off the top of my head. Man when they say something like you let me do anything or you allow anything or am I not allowed to do everything by you, it's a serious red flag and means they're users who will dump you from the moment you start mentioning your desires. They're usually emotionally unavailable and only care about their own needs. It happens mostly with older men with baggage who have not one ounce of energy left for a woman and just want sex and be left alone. This is why I don't give men sex anymore in the first months no matter what they tell me. 
pep training tips, biggest one is with puppies, soon as someone says to rub their nose in it I wonder what other non-noticeable abuse they're doing to their dog or cat. Another one is, they always somehow shift the blame to someone else, or they will always talk negatively about someone. When they are the victim in all of their stories, I had a colleague who didn't really have any friends outside of work. All of her stories were about how each of her friends had stabbed her in the back at one time or another. She went traveling to Australia with six girls and left early because they didn't want to do the things she wanted. It was glaringly obvious that she was the issue but still tried to play the sweet victim. There is another girl from my high school who has gained quite a few followers on social media through sharing her stories of being bullied in school for being bald. No one can remember that ever happening. She was quite popular but had lost touch with her group as you do when you move away for college. Also, she was never bald. Red flags when people enjoy pity. When men refer to women as bitches casually in conversation, like yeah and then I called the Uber and the bitch took me to Walgreens or that blonde bitch or she's the bitch that works at the Wendy's. I also don't like people who curse a lot and they don't know me or were in a professional setting. I curse a lot, all the fucking time, but there's a time and a place. When they use their seniority in a certain situation, whether they have one more degree than you or they have lived in a certain place, existed in general longer and used that to voice an extremely bigoted opinion and bristle at any pushback. I try to use this example but it makes them matter. Being older than the mayor and living in that town for longer does not mean the mayor defers to you. I'm a very motivated person who publishes and writes a lot, has a show is in a master's program and has a good job. Whenever someone says I wouldn't want to get in the way of your big dreams or mentions it in a certain kind of way, it always always comes off as insecure and subtly sarcastic. It's often paired with when you publish your book and become a big hotshot like I haven't already published several things. Edit. Another is do you live alone upon first meeting? I'm a female living abroad. Don't ask questions that put me in a potentially compromising position. Magical thinking is a red flag for me. While I do believe that people are entitled to their own opinions I simply can't sit through someone talking at length about Reiki, or energy healing, or, insert new age practice here. I'm a person who likes evidence. After reading through this thread, I'm more convinced than ever that at some point after dealing with all this passive-aggressive, gaslighting, manipulative BS, failure to own and failure to apologize, red flags aren't really red flags anymore, they're deal breakers, I refuse. We're all grown-ass people and I am not your servant slash lackey slash doormat. Beginning red flag in dating. People tell me I look young for my age 40 year old that looks and acts 10 years younger. So, how old do you think I am? How old do I look? Run, that dude is in midlife crisis mode, possibly, is, a narcissist, and will suck the self-worth right out of you. I'm wary of people who are quick to make you family, like I've known you for all of a month, I've seen you four times. I'm not your bro, there's two people who I'm comfortable calling family because of circumstances rather than by blood, one I've known since I was two and we've been decent friends for most of that time, the other was someone who was quick to make me family but it turned out okay in the end, he's one of about 10 people who have tried to call me bro on the regular and he's the only guy who I didn't end up regretting forming that kind of friendship with. It's not that they're inherently going to be bad people, it's that usually they come from a messed up family, and so by making you family they're also trying to establish the possibility of you fulfilling a portion of said messed up family. So when I end up not fitting the mold of that messed up family they have two options. Either get mad at me for not playing the role they made for me or recognize that I'm not a broken person, and I'm not going to become one for them. 
and there's something better than what they had growing up. Neither are easy things to deal with as a person and the one guy to take that last stance decided to do so because he was trying to be a better father to his children. I could respect that to no small and which is why despite some bad circumstances and some actual shouting matches I'm still quite loyal to him and I'm doing what I can to help him be a better father. As a husband and now a father it's harder for me to be okay and associate with these kinds of people more and more, again not because they're particularly bad people but because I won't allow my family to become broken because of somebody else's malfunction. My parents were always trying to bring in broken hurting people to help them, which was a noble and righteous action and desire, and tried their best to make sure none of that transferred to us kids, which was a righteous action in and of itself, but it took them a long time to learn that not everyone can be helped safely. When the person repeatedly notices and points out one specific, undesirable trait in others, it's likely to be projection. For example, the most arrogant person I know is constantly accusing others of being arrogant. Maybe this is the wrong platform to say it, but the whole using autism as a slam thing, the first time I ran into it, my brother was talking about some autistic art he saw online. I was like, word diagnosis, can I see? And it was literally just kids drawing their ox, like, literal 12 year olds, at people who call random people slash things slash themselves autistic as a joke. Did you never make anything when you were 12, doodle? Write some story, has nothing from that time in your life survived? Or did you just never attempt it in this first place? I've got that story I wrote in high school about the messiah snake and the mutated possums it raised. That keeps me humble. Am I supposed to apologize for setting boundaries? Invariably said because you reminded them that they specifically asked you to do the thing they're now mad you did. Will lose their shit at the reply. No, but I'm not going to apologize for respecting them. When people talk shit on their spouses, like even in the most subtle way it's still not appropriate small talk. If it's my best friend and she's telling me about a hardship or a fight, different. But when I'm meeting you for the first time I shouldn't be able to pick up that you dislike your spouse. So, I wish I was so naturally talented at, insert skill as you are. No bruh, I didn't magically pick up a guitar one day and start jamming out. I sounded awful for a good long while, and saying I'm good because of my perceived natural ability negates the one thousands of hours of actual practice I've put in. My only natural ability I consider myself to have is the willingness to try new hobbies and fail repeatedly until I feel I'm skilled enough to call myself decent. After my recent breakup, I'm not trying to be an asshole here seems like a red flag. It was always 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 something scientifically inaccurate that hurt my feelings. Doubting my gender, doubting my mental health issues, doubting the one thing I have known for a decade because I'm making a lot of assumptions lately. Doubt, 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 doubt. I'm not trying to be an asshole here except you're invalidating me constantly because I don't fit your existing worldview. You're listening to other people who have never fucking met me instead of my words. I'm not trying to be an asshole here and you're saying that I should listen to any therapist at all because their education trumps my experience in being me. I'm not trying to be an asshole here then stop fucking being one. I have a boss that uses weird phrases and it's just creepy. For example, a CO worker and I talked to each other about switching shifts and something got lost in the confusion. She then fussed at us about talking about it without her present by using the phrase. You guys talked about this offline. Like, what? Not talked about this without me, or talked about this off the clock, but offline. She has other phrases like this too but I can't think of any ATM. No one likes her as a manager. People who talk to me, 21, as if I was a child. I've had this happen at school and work. It seems like they think less of me because I'm kind of quiet. I'm not necessarily shy. I'm not afraid of people. 
this is just who I am, I'm also not less intelligent than you just because I'm quieter than you. Anyways, I prefer not to talk to these kinds of people. People like this are I'm all simple minded and narcissistic. Anyone who tries to convince you that you can trust them, come on man, you can trust me, I'd never do that to you. People who are actually trustworthy don't need to convince anyone of anything and they also know that real trust isn't freely given to people you barely know and are not offended when they are not given it. I'd if this is one, but when people say things like I can say and do whatever I want it's a free country. Ever hear of freedom of speech? In order to justify shitty things they say or do, like sure, you have the right to speak your mind, but people also have the right to judge you for what you say. Someone who frequently, in response to you telling them about a bad or inconvenient thing that happened to you, start with well what you should have done, or what I would have done, and then argue with your reasonings for not finding their solution helpful. These people tend to be very opinionated and stubborn, even in situations they don't really know anything about. This is especially true if paired with a tendency to always win, have bad losing habits, are generally immature, or have a history of just not knowing what they're talking about but just want to assert themselves in the conversation anyways. Add that, to those who do this to a fault, it's a completely normal behavior. Sometimes it's hard to not begin searching for solutions to a loved one's problem. However it's different when you do it excessively, or to the point of making the other person feel stressed or incompetent. I'm mostly talking about this when it's accompanied by other red flags but can be a standalone depending on frequency, social context. Less a direct statement or in more of a behavior, but I find myself becoming less able to hang out with the people I know who seem to have no respect for any type of input I have on a subject, despite me trying to always at least entertain what they're saying for the purpose of the discussion. Even if it's absurd, I'll have something to add, and they'll seem to not even hear what I've said, either ignoring it altogether or immediately dismissing it as incorrect. Sometimes even using the same arguments I just said in explaining why what I just said is nonsense, and on the occasion that I actually decide to go through the effort of defending my stance, they usually end it with some dismissive statement like well that's your opinion, yes, that is my opinion, and considering the fact that I have been sitting here listening to and showing respect towards, even if not always supporting, your opinion. I think would justify me in asking for the same basic respect. This turned into a rant, and I'm sorry about that. To put it shortly, I guess I'd say when a person seems to have a lot of difficulty with you disagreeing with them, and never seems to even pretend they are giving your position any real thought beyond no, you're wrong because, then I'd say they aren't your friend, and you should consider no longer trying to be theirs. When they disagree with someone, they default to attacking the person's character instead of their actions. We all do this from time to time, but with some people it's every time. The guy who messed up their order is an idiot, their boss is an evil sociopath. The person on Facebook who expressed a political view that opposes theirs is a degenerate. That new internet work is hopeless. In the end, the final result is that anyone they disagree with for any reason is either an inherently bad person who doesn't really merit listening to. When I started my new job the bubbliest girl who was loved by most of the staff and was also a HR manager would act like this when me and her were totally alone. She would whisper ever so softly, to herself but to me, you get no thanks around here. No one cares. You just wait and watch the knives stabbing when you least expect it. This is something she did on my first day. I said to her everyone seems lovely and accepting and she said well wait until you get to know them. This was a HR manager. Edit I've just realized this isn't very subtle. Also edit seems like a lot of people see this girl's actions as good. I don't. This was my first day and I really believe if people start talking about others they're setting the tone for you to perceive the person they are gossiping about. It made me nervous, your first day is bad enough, 
I was there for seven months and not one person showed any signs of being a backstabber, not one, nothing even remotely shady.